Eminences, Your Excellencies, Reverend Fathers and Mothers, Ladies and Gentlemen, Christos and Nesti. The use of pseudonyms is in Orthodox discussion forums or Orthodox blogs that provide room for discussion seem to me to raise rather grave ethical and spiritual problems which is why I have decided to tackle this issue rather than others today. The first problem is that the use of pseudonyms allows participants in forums to hide their ecclesial affiliation. The use of pseudonyms allows for persons belonging to schismatic groups to be present in places of discussion. We can even see that these people are very active, especially because of their greater motivation and their concern to proselytize. The use of synonyms also allows for the interjection of persons belonging to other Christian denominations. These are often identifiable because they either dispute orthodox positions or support clashing position. Sometimes, though, this is not clear, which in turn gives rise to confusion. The purpose of the discussion areas is obviously not to be limited to orthodox participants, but rather to be properly a forum in the ancient sense of the word, that is, a public place where people of all backgrounds and affiliations may meet and exchange. Nevertheless, it would be desirable for the clarification of the dialogue that ensues to know, in theory, who each person is and from which point of view he is expressing himself. A second problem is posed by the participants' degree of competence and authority. The participants in, for in forums or blogs are rarely people with expertise in various fields of theology. Indeed, the latter easily have other means of expressing themselves and more often keep away from discussions on forums and blogs because they are very time consuming and because the occup occupations of these people do not leave them much time. It is also very off-putting for people who have authority in a particular area to see their words disputed and contradicted in an off-handed way by participants who are less authorized or competent but who nevertheless voice their opinions with even more boldness and even less restraint since they hide behind pseudonyms. Anonymity allows everyone to express his own views in any area, even if he has no competence or no recognized authority. In many spaces of discussion, we even frequently see speakers who talk just to talk without having anything to say. Spontaneously, there is established a hierarchy among participants that is no one of knowledge and competence, but a formal and misleading hierarchy based on the level of self-confidence or on the quality of the style or furthermore on the quantity of a person's knowledge in a particular area. But in essence, we often observe a qualitative insufficiency connected to a poor mastery in the entire subject area under discussion, to a lack of discernment, or to a bad understanding of things. Often, 
there is a lack of rigor and precision in the treatment of areas of knowledge and of ideas. In the treatment of subjects, we observe globally a trend towards the lowest common denominator. One might object that the use of pseudonyms is not involved and that the same situation would present itself in the, if the participants were identified. But I think the situation is aggravated by the use of synonyms because their use allows one to avoid the risk of being personally considered as incompetent and abolishes all restraint and moderation in positions. The third problem connected to the foregoing is the relativization of the subjects discussed. In forums, there will always be a statement that contradicts another statement, no matter how authoritative and relevant the latter, the latter is. Even if you develop truthful, sensible, grounded and well-argued remarks, it is almost inevitable that someone will immediately come and contradict, distort and bend them with the use of a pseudonym promoting here, as elsewhere, a casual and irresponsible approach. The discussion almost always results in the weakening of the authority of participants who have it in relativization of the topic discussed and in giving in the end an impression of vagueness and uncertainty which in relation to matters affecting faith is embarrassing and not without consequences for readers without a firm faith. In the end, you can often ask what the discussion has contributed. The moderator of a widely read French-speaking blog, who has long been open to discussion, told me, I personally do not participate in religious forums because nothing comes of them. A fourth problem is that the use of pseudonyms promotes the unrestrained questioning of ecclesial authorities in an irresponsible and sometimes unfair way. This questioning usually comes from people who belong to schismatic groups or to other jurisdictions, but not always. Hidden behind a pseudonym, the contributor does not feel required to show any respect, restraint, or limit, and makes comments against priests or bishops he would not dare to utter in their presence, nor while writing under his real name. A fifth problem is that the use of pseudonyms promotes disrespect judgment and insults towards the other contributors for the same reasons as those listed above. In principle, such practices should not be found in spaces of discussion between Christians, but regrettably, we can often observe in such forums very violent interjections without moderators filtering them. Writing under a pseudonym, the contributor is a kind of two-faced personality that does not make him feel in his conscience that with regard to God's commandments and Christian ethics, he is guilty of serious misconduct towards his neighbor. If contributors wrote under their real names, they would not allow themselves such freedom and such words. A sixth comment. We can say in general 
that the use of pseudonyms fosters all sorts of liberties, excesses, and misbehavior because whoever writes under a pseudonym personally escapes the limits that are imposed by normal life in society, the rules of propriety, and the consideration of how he might personally be perceived, considered, and judged by others. Seventh point, the use of pseudonyms promotes the projection of passions into contributions. Pride, vanity, judgment of others, aggression in all its forms, disrespect, contempt, etc. The discussion space where people express themselves under pseudonyms is like a kind of infantile state of nature where there are no longer any limits set by society and, in this case, none of the demands of the Christian life and where there is no self-control, no restraint in thought or speech. More than, the, more than just a playground where children insult and beat each other shamelessly, it is often a place of release for all the patients. An eighth problem is posed by some participants using multiple pseudonyms, not only in various forums, but also in the same one. There might be various reasons for this, the main two being, on the one hand, the desire to strengthen one's own position by having others believe that it is held by several people, and on the other hand, the desire to redirect, to, to redirect the discussion. All of this not only creates schizophrenic or ambivalent positions unworthy of a Christian, let us recall that St. James denounced the deep psyche, that is to say, those who are double-minded, but constitutes a deceit with regard to readers or to other participants who naively see in different pseudonyms different persons. The ninth problem is posed by trolling which is a more serious form of deception. A troll, in the language of the web, means a person who, by using one or more pseudonyms, participates in a discussion or a debate for the purpose of arousing or artificially feeding controversy and generally disrupts the balance of the community in question sometimes to the point of shutting down the discussion. A troll is someone who does not share the general orientation of the discussion, but disguises himself Two and employs minutes. various strategies to avoid being identified. Two minutes left. False naivete, various pseudonyms reflecting different identities as to ethnicity, sex, or age, etc. In this, we see a phenomenon of lies and deception that is incompatible with Christian ethics, with more often than, than not a perverse side, especially with regard to instigating specific conflicts or widespread discord, and this is sometimes done for pure pleasure. Behind professor, trolling, professor, one, one minute left. One often finds pride or vanity. The troll often seeks to measure his own power over the direction of the discussion or against those he goes to, into reacting in a particular direction. He also seeks to score points against others, whom he sees as characters in a role play 
whom he therefore does not respect as persons. Sometimes he tries in a more banal way to put the spotlight of himself by making himself interesting when in fact he has nothing to say. As a conclusion, let us now make a summary of the ethical and spiritual problems related to the use of pseudonyms. The use of pseudonyms might appear to be a demonstration of humility, but what modesty is there to hide if one is not known? On the contrary, there is often pride in wanting to be considered more than what one is. There is also an inability of the person to be comfortable with his or her own limits. There is also sometimes a fear of exposing oneself directly to the judgments of others, and thus also there exists a difficulty with being oneself in all humility before others. Yet, apart from this, there is often a lack of courage to hold certain views under one's own identity and to accept personally the ideas which one promotes or the positions one holds. There is also an inability to accept responsibility for one's, one's ideas or words, especially when they are outrageous and particularly when aggressive or insulting in form. As I have noted several times, the use of a pseudonym is a lie towards others and a deceit. The fact of not being the person who one is but a character, or according to the ancient meaning of the Greek word prosopon, a mask, creates a distorted relationship with oneself and with the others. Whoever adopts a pseudonym does not interact with others in what he is, and so distorts for his part the relationship with them. On the other hand, others cannot perceive and interact with him under his own identity, and thus their relationship with him is also distorted. To be a Christian is to be a person, not a character. It is to have a face, not a mask. This person is called to develop, but first, she must accept herself with humility at every stage of her development. She should not hide, but accept to be what she is and to allow herself to be seen as she is. Finally, to be Christian is to have a name and to make it on. The name we received in baptism, the one by which the priest names us when he confers on us the sacraments, the one by which God will name us. To take on a pseudonym is in a way to exclude oneself from the spiritual sphere into which we entered through baptism. It is in a way to put oneself away from the society of the children of God, that is the church, and that will be the kingdom in fullness, so as instead to be a dramatic character, a member of, fic of a fictitious society. Meanwhile, we cannot consider that a first name is sufficient for identification. Because of the multitude of people having the same first name, we risk, by appearing only under our first name, that we might be mistaken for someone else and that our limits and weakness might be ascribed to him in harmful way. In order, to, for, in order for identification to be real and direct, it is important to add one's surname, which with the first name indicates the membership of the person in a social reality with all the responsibilities the latter involves, especially with respect to others. To conclude all these reflections, it seems to me not only useful but necessary from a spiritual point of view that all orthodox forums and blocks adopt a code of ethics 
requiring that all participants express themselves under their real identities with the site moderators themselves setting these examples. Thanks for attention.